having some solid niches in your Etsy shop can make or break your shop to see some serious sales throughout your lifetime of your business. Today, I am bringing to you a quite different video than I usually do. Instead of speaking about some of the most profitable niches, hear me out, wait a second before you click off the video. I wanted to go over some, what some would deem strange niches, maybe even a little bit silly or weird niches that I personally found very fascinating and I loved to research as I looked on Etsy. Also to say, these are really profitable niches on Etsy the more you look into them. So these might not be the most profitable, but you could still get some serious sales in these niches that I am diving deep into today. So don't forget to watch this video in full where I am diving into six strange niches that can actually get you sales on repeat on Etsy. With that being said, to start this video off, how do you even pronounce the word niche? It is spelled N-I-C-H-E. And I've had quite the controversy in my comment section in the lifetime of this YouTube channel. So please tell me below, how do you pronounce niche? Do you pronounce it as niche, N-E-E-S-H, for the sake of commenting down below, or do you pronounce it niche? N-I-T-C-H. I would love to hear how you pronounce this word. And without further ado, we're gonna dive straight into the video. So first off, what is a niche and why is it so important? And why do you hear all of us YouTubers and anyone in the Etsy world talking about niches? Now, niches are a particular interest of a group. It's usually to be compared to maybe a hobby or something someone identifies as or something someone is very interested in. That one thing could be as simple as maybe you are a mom and you like to express that you're a mom on a t-shirt or a mug. Another niche example is maybe your occupation. Maybe you are a nurse and you have a t-shirt that you want to buy on Etsy that says that you're a nurse or it's in your niche and it has a funny quote on it. Niches allow a customer to essentially find you on Etsy. If you're very specific and narrow down on your niches and especially what you're designing your products for, for those niches. Hopefully that's helpful to some of you and maybe other of you have started to consider clicking off this video because I said niche 10 different times. Now, hold up a second. I wanna show you my sample order from Printify I got. That is a water tumbler because some of you may appreciate this. Other of you may have already clicked off this video. So this is one of the sample products I ordered that says, Drink every time Heather says niche. Now, I got this to promote, first of all, hydration. So if you don't already have water with you during this video, every time I say niche, please drink some water responsibly. We don't want anyone having water poisoning from this video, but drink responsibly. Now that we know what a niche is, what I like to dive into with niches is micro niching. Now, micro niching is essentially going into a broad niche and going down the branches of that niche until you're at a very, very tiny branch, which I consider a micro niche. Now, an example of this is if we're looking at the occupation niche, which is a huge niche. And if we go down that branch and we talk about education, which is one branch, and then from education, we go to maybe a teacher and what type of subjects do teachers teach? There's so many subjects underneath that branch. Now I'm really getting off subject here in a totally different tangent that would go into a different video for another time, but hopefully you get the point that finding your niches is like finding your customer who is eventually going to purchase your product. And that's why today I wanted to reveal those six strange niches that can help those of you who may be still trying to find your niches to add to the composition of your Etsy shop that hopefully will be super successful and super profitable one day. Now, the first niche that we absolutely need to be talking about, and this is one of the niches I absolutely love so much on Etsy, is the pickle niche. Now, this is not really that strange of a niche, not to me at least, and I want to, first of all, preface this video by saying that I don't actually think these niches are really that strange. I actually absolutely love all of the niches I'm talking about in this video. The pickle niche is very, very simple. In fact, a sweatshirt, gilded 18,000 sweatshirt that just has pickles and vintage pickle jar graphics on a sweatshirt has done sellers thousands of dollars in their lifetime by just selling a pickle sweatshirt. And really, that is as simple as creating a simple design that sells on repeat. There is so much profit in the pickle niche alone, and 
Every time I look at the pickle niche, I just get so inspired. I absolutely love it. So this second niche has to be close to my top favorite niche that I found in the making of this video, which is the raccoon and opossum loving niche. All of these t-shirts and sweatshirts are so adorable. And I don't know about anyone else, but when I'm on Facebook, I always get suggested to myself reels of opossums and raccoons as house pets. And they are the most adorable house pets on this planet. I mean, sorry to my puppy that I just got, but oh my gosh, they are so adorable. And this is just top, top of my list for that reason. The raccoon and opossum fandom that we do see on Etsy. And it's a really profitable niche. I mean, look at these numbers on the screen. It blows my mind all the time that there is just this huge fandom for raccoons and opossums. And I'm just so happy. This niche just makes me happy overall. The third on my list is mushroom lovers. Now, I feel like this is probably a bad title for this niche or exactly what it is. It might be fungi lovers or mushroom lovers. And I know there's a whole quote on t-shirts that's I'm a fun guy. And I'm not going to lie, when I first saw that t-shirt, it took me a few takes to understand that that was a pun. Basically, that's how behind I am and how slow I am to pick up on punny jokes. Nonetheless, the fun guy and mushroom lover niche in total is super profitable. I mean, we see it on tote bags that have bestseller badges. We see just simple mushroom vintage-esque designs on t-shirts and wall art and tapestries and mugs and just anything with mushrooms, this tends to really sell. And especially if you pair it with the cottage core niche, which is not on our list today, surprisingly, but it can be tied into that. And if you're using SEO, Pro tip, I would use cottage court in your SEO for this niche. Next one on the list is the chicken lovers niche. And this is for people who are very passionate about chickens and maybe laying eggs of their chickens. And it's honestly such a cute niche and I absolutely just love it. I'm here for it and it is really profitable. And we can't say it's not because there's a huge niche and love for chickens on Etsy. So if you haven't already went into it, might be a good time to enter into the chicken loving niche. It's really a cute niche. I love it. I love all the cute chicken sayings on sweatshirts and t-shirts, just all of the graphics that are used on these sweatshirts. They're just so adorable and it's just such a cute niche all around. So number five on the list took me a little bit to find and understand exactly what this niche was. This niche that we are speaking of is the Whimsy Goff Goblin Core niche, which technically could be divided into two niches. So there's Whimsy Goff and Goblin Core. When I was looking on Google, I had to educate myself on this niche, which I got educated and understood that it is a niche and a aesthetic niche and aesthetic type of style that circulates around things that are not as trendy or not as glorified in nature, if that makes any sense. It's a really cute niche overall, and I'm so here for it. Again, it's just such a fun and really aesthetically pleasing niche. Honestly, when I was looking into this and the style of Whimsy Goff, I kind of got inspired and it almost made me want to purchase a few t-shirts from other print-on-demand shop owners because I actually really like the style. I think it's really cute. It's really fun. I don't know, like there's something to it and it is very whimsy goth and I love it. I absolutely love it. The last and final niche that I found in my searches is the forest core niche, which is a really neat niche. Really cool, actually. Like it reminds me of artwork just on t-shirts and tote bags. Some of the most popular products for this niche is the Comfort Color C1717. There is also tote bags that I've seen that have really sold for this niche alone. You can sell wall art for this niche. There's just so much that you can do with this niche. And it's a really nice niche, especially for people who are outdoors lovers or just into cottage core. And you can use that as SEO. It kind of falls within the cottage core main branch niche. And it's more of a broad niche almost now. Cottage core has like somehow outgrown itself and not in a bad way. I don't want to say that in a negative way, but Cottagecore has basically shifted a little bit and has branches under it, or at least adjacent branches. It's really, really fun, actually. And I absolutely love 
seeing the graphics that are created on these t-shirts by other designers on Etsy. And it's just very beautiful and aesthetically pleasing all around and a really nice niche to design for when we're going into the summer and going into late summer as far as all the cottage core trending products that we're seeing, Goblin Core, Whimsigoth, and also Forest Core. Besides that, that's it for this video. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button. If you haven't already started a print on demand business and you're looking to start it with Etsy, please check out my free course called the Print on Demand Crash Course. It is in the links down below. And also I have tons of free trainings down below in the links as well. Besides that, thank you all for watching this video and I'll see you guys in the next one.